So before I start, I just have to remark that I look so much like a student that when I came out, um, I literally was stopped in the hall because I had headphones in my ears. I didn't have a visitor's pass and they thought I was a student and they started chasing me down. Um, so open this up. There we go. Be a leader in your own life. Mary Oliver, an old American English author, once asked, what are you doing with that crazy, precious life of yours? And the question I ask you today is what are you doing with that crazy, precious life of yours? Or more importantly, what are you going to do? In, to there you go. In today's presentation, I plan to cover four things. First off, it's not about where you start, <coughs> it is about where you want to be. That, you know what, it's okay to fail, and that's awesome, because you're going to learn a lot from it. The third, be a leader. Be a leader in your own life by getting involved. And finally, be a leader by just doing something. Now you're probably wondering who is this dude in front of you? Well, I'm a graduate of South Lakes High School, 2009. I uh, went to Northern Virginia Community College for three years. Uh, trans at Northern Virginia Community College, I was the exiting student government president. I served as an orientation assistant, which you'll be dealing with uh, soon, basically people who walk you for tours and help you register for classes. Um, and then I transferred from Northern Virginia Community College to the University of Virginia McIntyre School of Commerce, which is the second best business school in the country. Um, here are some pictures that actually just came from Singapore a few weeks ago. Um, we helped a lot of children. We helped um, do a campaign to get 130 million children to wash their hands more through um, Unilever's uh, brand Life Boy. And uh, here's me at Google trying to eat a gingerbread man. That's like triple my size. Um, as for my career, I am an entrepreneur. I am the author of a book called Investing Blunt to the Point, and I also currently run a mobile app startup, uh, which we're releasing an app soon that. Uh, it's called Drunk Moan. I know none of you guys in here drink, but it hides your, uh, hides your contact when you want to get drunk because you can't drunk call and drunk text people uh, for, the, for the gags and giggles. So that's who I am. Graduate of Northern Virginia Community College, current student at University of Virginia, and currently an entrepreneur. But four years ago, February 10th, 2009, I was kicked out of my house as a senior in high school. Senior sitting here listening to a speaker just like you. I'm here to tell you that it's not about where you start, it's about where you want to be. But I can tell you that four years ago, I had no idea that I'd be sitting here speaking to you guys today, that I'd be in the schools that I'm into, or even have done anything that I've done. Just imagine you being kicked out, not waking up in the same bed that you slept in the night before. That there is no mother, no father telling you, hey, you need to get to school. Hey, yo, you need to get to work. Even more importantly, you know, here's a nice home cooked meal or um, let me clean your room. Some of them I know hassle you, but they end up cleaning it yourself. There are some people in here that probably your parents maybe threaten you to say, hey, I'm going to kick you out of your house. Well, unfortunately, my parents actually did it. I'm here to tell you that it's not the end of the world. I'm also here to tell you that at the end of the day, I was angry. I was sad. I was uncertain. And I was scared. I was angry because no one wakes up and says, yeah, this is the best thing that ever happened to me. I was just kicked out of my house and now I have to be an adult. I was sad because I didn't have my parents necessarily there, you know, helping me tra um, transition from my high school career to my college, figuring out how I would pay for college, but now I had to pay it, on my, pay it on my, by myself. I was uncertain because I didn't know where I was going to be two weeks from then, let alone what school I was going into because I was working two jobs to sustain myself, plus I was going finishing up my senior year, figuring out how I was going to pay for college, and finally, what college I was even going to go to because I had the option to go to George Mason University or go to Northern Virginia Community College. It was a tough time. I was very blessed, I was very lucky because my best friend's mom took me in. 
my best friend's mom, um, I ended up living with a Liberian family from then until currently, four years from now. It was an uncertain time because this was a different culture, um, different household. And I know you have probably have, you may have heard of friends that have gone into a household and two or three months later, the, they just stay there, kind of, you know, and their parents say, you need to get out and do something else. I was very fortunate that they took me in. But one of the first times in my life, I had a mother figure. Um, but it was scary, you know, I'm Korean, Russian, and Polish. African culture is very different, but amazing, and they cook great food. I remember April 2009, um, I was complaining about my parents and how angry I was and how sad I was, which is understandable. And she put her hand up and said, Josh, stop. And what she did, she asked me for a hundred dollar bill. And I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm a broke student. I can't give you a hundred dollar bill. And she said, exactly. She said, Josh, you can't give me a hundred dollar bill because you just don't have it. How can someone give something that they just don't have themselves? If your parents are not happy with themselves, if your parents can't necessarily give love to you or to themselves, how can they give love to you? That Josh, look, you're 18. I understand that you're angry with your parents. I understand that you're sad. And as hard as it is for me to tell you this, Josh, that you need to take care of yourself. You need to move forward. That you can't blame your parents for what happened. In fact, not only that, but you need to love your parents unconditionally. Because at the end of the day, you will be happier that way. That as hard as it is that this situation happened, if you can move forward and you know, love your parents and do good, then you'll be fine. I can't wait, I can't say that the next day that I woke up and said, yeah, this is the best thing that ever happened to me. I'm happy, I'm healed. No, it took a few months, maybe over even a year. I can tell you right now that for me, I love my parents unconditionally. You know, if my parents knocked on my door tomorrow and said, hey, let's go to IHOP, I'd be the happiest man in the world. My parents knocked on my door and said, hey, Josh, I, and just said these following seven words, Josh, I love you. Josh, I miscount with that. I'm proud of you. It would make me happier than anything in the world. However, I can't live my life expecting that. That I can't, my past is not, it doesn't define me. What defines me is where I want to be. But what I'm here to tell you is that you can't change your past. But you can define, oh, <laughs> but you can define your future. Yeah. You guys heard me in the back though, right? Yeah. Awesome, okay. I'm here to tell you from this story that you can't define your past. That your past doesn't define you. What defines you and what makes you who you are is where you want to be. And you, as a person, not your parents, not the faculty, not anyone in your life. You choose where you want to be. You choose to let something like being kicked out of your house or maybe getting rejected from a school or maybe failing an exam. You choose whether that affects you not or not. Because every day is the first day of the rest of your life. And that you, personally, are the forebringer of what you want to do. And that's my first lesson today. And it's not about where you start, it's about where you want to be.